Waves can be broken into two very different and important categories. It's important that we remember these two. They describe or differentiate for us the type of disturbance that is traveling down the medium. In one case, all the jiggling of the particles or, or oscillators in the system happen along the direction that the entire wave is moving. That's called a longitudinal wave. In the other case, although the, the wave might be traveling to the right, the jiggling is up and down. That's called a transverse wave. We're going to look at each of these in, in turn, and over the course of this part of the class, we'll be differentiating which each kind of wave that we're looking at is, whether it's transverse or longitudinal. A transverse wave looks like this. We have a bunch of oscillators, maybe represented by these little cubes, and they have an amplitude of oscillation that's up and down. However, there's a propagation of the wave that's off to the right, and so that's the red arrow here, the direction of propagation. You can see there's this thing called the wavelength that characterizes the amount of distance it takes for the wave to kind of ripple itself through. It's about the, the case where the, the whole oscillation has gone down and up across the length of the medium. When it's the case that the direction of propagation is perpendicular to the amplitude of oscillation, this is called a transverse wave. This happens in geophysics. It's called an S wave. It's a kind of uh, type of ripple in the Earth. It also happens on, for guitar strings or violin strings. It there are lots of examples of transverse waves. But the key distinction is when the jiggling or oscillation of individual os uh, particles in the medium happens transversely to the direction of propagation, that's what we mean by a transverse wave. Notice what happens to the little black dot. It jiggles up and down, and then its energy is transferred onto its neighbor. It happens over a course of a wavelength that that whole effect is done. But the transverse oscillation of the black uh, dot here is what tells you that you have a transverse wave. The second kind of wave is called a longitudinal wave. It's as if you had this big, long connection of particles on a spring, and you push with your hand in toward the right and all of a sudden they start jiggling toward one another and you can see what happens to the little black dot. The black dot is now moving back and forth along the direction of propagation. So although the, enti the entire disturbance is passing from left over here down to the right over here, that just marks the direction of propagation. What makes this thing a tr longitudinal wave is that the motion of that individual black dot is along the same direction as the direction of propagation. If we wanted then, we could say that the distance that this thing, this individual black dot moves is called the amplitude, and the distance over which the whole effect is over with, that would be about this much, is called the wavelength. In geophysics, when something like this happens as a longitudinal wave, this is called a P wave, or a pressure wave. In sound, that's another example of a longitudinal wave that just has the name of a sound wave. You can view this very nicely if you think about a slinky. Slinkies can be used to make both transverse and longitudinal waves. If I fix one end of a slinky to the wall and hold the other end with my hand and stretch out the slinky, now I can jiggle my hand back and forth, I will get a ripple that goes down the length of the slinky where I see areas of compression and areas of being stretched out and then compression and stretched out. Or I can take my hand and jiggle it up and down and I'll get what's called a transverse wave where the wave where the disturbance goes up and then down and then up and then down and we can see an enactment of that right here notice what's happening to the transverse wave the jiggle that's going up and down goes down the length of the, of the entire spring notice what's happening to the longitudinal wave it's the compression that's traveling The slinky then can help us visualize the difference between a longitudinal and a transverse wave. Of course, there are many examples on different media, and we'll just, we're just using it as a way of illustrating it for now. We'll be looking at transverse and longitudinal waves throughout the rest of this course.